Hello and welcome to a video that exists because I'm bored. So, context. I wanted to do a video a while ago that was just my... Like, uh, look, okay. <laughs> Basically, a long time ago, back in D2 Vanilla, I saw the pyramids, and I thought, damn, those are cool, and also, damn, we're fucked. But it wasn't until after Forsaken that things started to get weird, because here's the thing. A long time ago, I went back to the motherland, so to say. And by motherland, I just mean a different state. And <laughs> I... Since that day, I've been having at least one dream every night. So that was two years ago, which is fucking great. So <laughs> I've had at least <laughs> one dream a night, minus two or three days. And those happened in a row, so that's lovely. But since then, I've had a lot of dreams about these fucking ships. So call me obsessed, because I totally am. Whatever. Let's get into them. Uh, by the way, after Shadowkeep comes out, I'll mark it. These start to get out of order, but yeah. Anyway. So this first one was about the time Season of the Drifter came out. Um, if I recall correctly, in the dream, I was doing stuff on Earth near an old water facility. Uh, a place that was very similar to some place in Virginia that I used to see, but... Anyway, it was it was for a quest, and I had to scan, and the next step of the quest is I had to scan or some wreckage near the Exodus Black and, for our activity from the Loyalists, from Kalos. After I finished scanning, it threw me into a cutscene, Ikora was narrating, and the it showed the Kuiper Belt, and the Kuiper Belt was like this massive, just like, field of wrecked ships and, you know, asteroids. And there's just this hole in it, this perfect, like, circular hole. And reportedly, that's where Ness is passed in. And it, during the cutscene, it showed a pyramid <laughs> passing right through that same hole. Uh, this pyramid didn't look like any of the pyramids we've seen, not from the concept art, not from the end credits, uh, nothing like that. It was just... It, I mean, it had the shape, but there were other things that were different from it. And the, the basics of the cutscene was that the awakening of the Traveler would bring in extra threats, and you know... That's not anything new. By the time I had that dream, Season of the Drifter was already out. We already knew the pyramids were coming <laughs> from... Well, since the end of Vanilla, but... Yeah. But, uh... That was the first one. The second dream... I was... It was all third person, and I saw... The entire Pyramid Armada. Again, they weren't... They weren't the same type of ship designs that we've seen. They're all different. I mean, they had a vague resemblance to the concept art, but they weren't the same. But, um... I just watched them fight a different alien armada of... I don't know. I was paying attention to their ships. <laughs> but they were getting absolutely destroyed. The pyramids were just fucking dominating. So that's lovely. Very hope-inducing, right? I'm... I'm bored. I look. I'm I'm half awake here. <laughs> but uh for the third dream and this is kind of the inspiration for this video because once I saw like the Europa promotional images and the Beyond Light press kit, I was like, "Huh, that looks familiar." So I was in someplace cold. I like to think it was the Arctic. I, truth be told, I have no idea. But I was... It was cold. I was just standing there. 
I had a hologram of of the pyramids, like of a pyramid. Just this one had no detail. It was just straight up a tetrahedron. But I had a hologram out, and I was getting incoming communications, just discussing shit. Honestly, it was kind of like the radio that's near the strangers camp, but it wasn't. It really wasn't. And eventually, I got, I got a, I got a single message that was directed at me, and it just said I was right. Honestly, I don't know what I was right about, but the reason why I bring, why I like emphasize, why I want to emphasize this dream more, is because this is a very familiar sight. Like this, like it, I literally turned this way. It was just a flat plane of ice, little, little things off in the distance. It was sunrise, and there's just a fucking pyramid there. It didn't again, it didn't look like that. We didn't know how the pyramids would look. This was before Shadowkeep, but yeah, just there, hovering in the distance. This, to get this out of the way, a lot of the pyramid stuff in my dreams are just ominous. They're just kind of there. I mean, okay, they take a pretty active role a lot of the time, but they just... I don't know, their presence in the games very much matches their presence in my dreams, which, you know, props to Bungie, you know, props to Bungie for that. I, uh, I, I don't, I guess they really nailed the pyramid stuff so that I, even my brain and its overactive imagination has literally no other way to make these things work. That is a pretty shot, though. But, um... For the fourth dream, I was on a field trip with other people that I didn't know. <laughs> um... Whatever. Dream context. We stopped by a field, and I watched as a meteor crashed in the distance. Uh, this is where the dream skipped over, and we were being, like, thrown into a military compound for our own safety. Sheltered. Uh, later that night, I was just walking around, and I saw on a TV, um, a news report in South America. And here, they mentioned that there are things attacking everyone there and I saw one of them pop up behind the reporter and just jump her and then the transmission cut so I heard something outside I walked up the stairs and looked down outside and I saw one of these things just shambling about and it turned to me, like it was walking down, it stopped, and it just spun, looked right at me with its two white dot eyes. And this is where you may ask, what does this have to do with the darkness? And I will say, well, it looked very similar to what Kate drew in the Taken King Collector's Edition. Remember that? I'm just gonna flash it up on screen. Yeah, that. Um. So, it ran up, started climbing the, climbing the building, it entered the window, and I was flanked by soldiers, and they couldn't kill it until one of them managed to shoot it in the eyes, which is when it just melted into a pile of black goo. But wait, 
that's not all. Because the entire base was under attack, and I was like, oh shit. So I went to find... Um, I went to go find my parents, who were also in the compound. And when I went to where they were, I only... I just saw, like, tons of skeletons. Just dead bodies all over the place, and piles of black goo as well. Just everywhere. And then the dream ended, which is great. Very, very ambiguous. Definitely not implying that everyone was dead. The fifth dream was an invasion. Just on Earth, vibing. Suddenly the pyramids descend from the sky, and we're all kind of fucked. Uh, literally no resistance because we just can't do anything. And you know, everything's pretty bad. But then... We, uh... I, I group up with a bunch of survivors, and together we go, Hey, what if we just use their own weapons against them? And in the dream, there were just like a bunch of guns. You know, they had unique looks, but other than that, they were just, they were just guns. But we're like, okay, yeah. And the dream ended there. So, this next dream, th the sixth dream, this is the last one I think I'll actually do in order. Because after this, my memory gets a little hazy on when each one appears. But also, this is around the time Shadowkeep came out. Um, it was a little bit before... No, no, no. It was, like, immediately after. Immediately after Shadowkeep came out. So, there was a lot to the dream. I don't remember most of it. All I remember is that I was, for some reason, in India. And I was, like, in a downtown area of a city. Which is... okay. I was driving around, and I eventually got to this office building. As I got out, um... This, uh this image of the nightmare of the fanatic just threw itself together in my hands, which is interesting, but not that important, because it did nothing. But I entered the building, and it was completely like pitch black. And eventually, a single light shone on me, and it was the gold plate that you see at the bottom of the lunar pyramid. Which is where you land in the mission beyond. Um, but yeah. So, <laughs> again, this will be out of order, but I'm just gonna get these out. This dream is about, it's weird. This is one of the few times I have like a dream within a dream. Yeah, get your Inception references out of the way. But the normal dream, like the real world in the dream, is marked in like normal colors. It has everything's fine. But the dreams, like within the dream, were all marked by like the ascendant plane lighting. You know, that blue, like desaturating fog. Yeah. So that was actually kind of cool. Because the regular dream was just me going about my day, but it was a bit altered. But the dreams within dreams were kind of interesting. The first one was me going to my old elementary school. And, you know, it's foggy as hell. But I look up and there's a traveler. I'm like, okay. So then I, quote, wake up, and then the next time I go to a secondary dream. Um, it was me fighting somebody alongside a, a hive wizard. It's not the first time the hive appeared in my dreams. I think this is the only time that it's normal. <laughs> that I interact normally with hive. 
but we were fighting this person. We beat them, and then I just go fucking camera mode. I hover up into the sky and off into the distance, and in this black void I see the Lunar Pyramid, but in Ascendant Plane Lighting, which is kind of a neat sight, honestly. I kind of want to see... I kind of want to see this stuff in the center plane lighting now, like in game. But um, anyway, after that, the dream like fully cut off, like no waking up back in the normal dream, just waking up, waking up for real. Because <laughs> that's just that's just how it works. Next dream. So I was on a jet ski. I don't know why, I just was. And I was just riding around. Uh, anyway, I made a hard left and saw the traveler on one side. And I looked to the right and it was just a massive pyramid on the other. Yeah, that's about all there was to that dream, so. <laughs> Um, another dream. I was flying to a massive pyramid, like twice the size of this one, and I I entered it, I walked around, and I saw this massive space. Like, it was, I mean, once I get into the once I get into the pyramid here, I'll be able to show you, like, what that actually entails. But, for now, I want you to think of the mausoleum area on the Dreadnought. You know, the one with the portal that takes you through to the rest of the Regicide mission. You know, the part and enemy of my... You know, well, look, the point is, you see the front half of the Crash Cabal ship. Um, so, behind that portal... There's this massive space that ends with, like, a green light. Think of that, but pyramid architecture, square instead of diamond, and just absolutely fucking massive. Like, it's... It's amazing. And not only that, but there are, like, smaller pyramids in there as well. Like, there were, I want to say that, like, realistically, they were the size of, like, jump ships or drop ships, but honestly, I have no idea. It, it was, it was, it was weird. But then, um, the dream switched, and it became about, it became about me and a few other people trying to stop these terrorists from committing a heist. And it got real weird because the buildings started bending and gravity got all strange. But the goal was to subdue the terrorists and grab a time travel device that they had, which they would use to reset the heist if they failed. And we got it. And the next, the final part of the dream was me and this sort of like group of re like a resistance just viewing Earth and seeing like this massive, you know, fleet of pyramids around it. This is a gold plate. There's nothing in front of it, it was from the early, early dream. But, um, it was. It was just this massive fleet above Earth, and our goal was to, you know, stop them. And the reason why we needed the time travel device was just in case we failed, we could go back and um, undo our mistakes so that we could improve. So we sent somebody to do that, and the guy was like, I hope I never have to, like, actually do that, because that implies everyone's failed. And it's like, yeah, that's kind of depressing <laughs> but you know he left we got ready and the dream ended 
this area is what I meant, by the way. But like, instead of going down, it went straight out. It was really cool. By cool, I mean it felt cold. Not, I mean, it looked cool, but whatever, you get the idea. <laughs> um, this next stream didn't have anything really to do with the pyramids. So I won't be describing all of it, but I'll say that it was about moving through a fortress. And there there were checkpoints within the fortress and these checkpoints they had um, holograms of pyramids as like as those checkpoints like you know if you're playing race and halo you get those like zones that you pass through and that's your checkpoint it's it's like that but with little pyramid holograms they were modeled after the end credits uh, versions, which I may or may not know the details of, or most of the details of. It took a lot of close looking to get that detail, but whatever, y you get the idea. Um, this next stream's a bit weird. <laughs> I mean, they're all weird. I say this a lot every time I discuss dreams, but they're all weird. But this one in particular is really strange. Um, I was doing Court of Oryx in D1, and I killed Thalnok and got Recluse out of it. Except it wasn't Recluse, it was Mountaintop, but it was called Recluse. This was because I got Recluse, like, the day before. It's the first, like, truly pinnacle weapon that I work towards. And also the last pinnacle weapon I work towards. So that's fun. Yeah, the news of sunsetting really kind of put me off of going after anymore. But, um... Anyway... So I got congratulated, and then I went to the moon, and there was a new miss a new mission on the moon. So I'm like, oh cool. So I did that, and I loaded up in the sanctuary place, and I looked towards the hole near the Scarlet Keep, and there was just this green mist. I looked opposite to the unplayable space, and I saw Jupiter, and I'm like, okay, that's weird. And I saw a triangular shadow go over Jupiter. This was before the, that cutscene actually happened, but it was leaked and I watched it. So yeah, that's uh, that's something I did. Um. <laughs> yeah. But, um, it shifted then to, like, an alien civilization. Like, literally the space on in Sanctuary shifted into something else. It became, like, an alien race, and these, and the words being spoken to me were the last transmissions of the Traveler to that race using someone else's voice, but these were words spoken, like, from the Traveler, at least in the dream, which isn't something I would do, but whatever. And then I saw the terrain shift into a defunct lunar base, and it was just destroyed. It was on fire somehow. There were there was just shrapnel and rubble everywhere. And I walked outside and there were these two people. Just pale black veins beneath the skin, glowing orange eyes, wearing all black armor, just looking off into space, just kind of sitting in the middle of the destruction. Um, I then went camera mode again 
and I hovered around the destination map until I got to, well, the Scarlet Keep. And you now beneath the Scarlet Keep there's a pyramid, but all around the Scarlet Keep there were more pyramids of various shapes and sizes. I mean, various shapes. I mean, like, the patterns on them. They're still all tetrahedral. But, um, I went back to the Sanctuary, and I saw what may have been the oddest sight. <laughs> it was a dark version of the player character. Which, I mean, for the sake of the dream, it was a dude, I think? I don't know. I wasn't paying attention and a dark version of Saint-14, which is something that would never happen, but again, just dream context, go with it. And they talked about how the dark was good. I'm like, okay. I then walked over and there was this pool. Like, it, it, I, went, I went to an area that looked like the emissary room like in the nine space that you know with the one with the big emissary but instead of the emissary it was just a flat plane and then in the distance was jupiter and it was just there was just a row of people just standing there unmoving and in front of them was the the player guardian again again dark version and a dark version of savala and as the player character rose a sword and stabbed all of those people in one swipe, Dark Savalo is like, this is what the Hive do. They just kill. And they think they're doing it for like a good cause, but they're doing it wrong. They're not killing right, I guess. And the one phrase that I do remember him saying is that there was, there is beauty in annihilation. And then the dream ended. <laughs> um, the next one is also filled with weird messages like that. So, again, cold place. This time it really was the Arctic. I was roaming about with um, a dude some dude that in the dream was my dad not actually my dad but again dream context and he came up and said that he discovered something and it was just like open pyramid architecture covered in ice and looking a little rusty it was covered in like you know like the orange brown like it, it was it was rust and suddenly a bunch of lights came on and we're like oh okay and then a nearby glacier literally shook itself apart like absolutely shook itself and what do you know underneath is a fucking big ass pyramid covered in rust so we start walking over there and we watch as the pyramid peels all of the corrosion just off of it Revealing the actual, like, you know, stone gray underneath. Which is a neat effect. And then, we went to the very front of the ship, and we saw it open. And this was kind of interesting, but what was in it was nothing. It was just a dark, blank void. There was nothing in it. But... It would just, the, the dream camera, I guess, just zoomed in so close. And eventually the dream just didn't know what the hell to do with itself. So it fizzed out and reset back to when we were walking up to the tip in the first place. So, redo. The tip of the pyramid opened, and inside was a smaller pyramid, which, looking back at it now, kind of reminded me of a crux of darkness. But it started spinning rapidly, and then it dissipated, and inside was just a normal human woman. Because the pyramid was spinning, we had all taken shelter behind a 
behind a little, you know, ice shelf, I guess. It's not a shelf, really. Those things are fucking huge, but... It's just a little band of snow and ice. And we stood there watching, and eventually the woman found us. Instead of attacking us, though, she just talked. And we all talked. We were like, hey, aren't you the people that caused the collapse? And she was like, yeah, but... And then she started talking about how the Traveler is evil, and like, you know... I can't jump up here. <laughs> and how, you know, the pyramids are essentially just natural law. Or at least that's the philosophy that they hold. And we're like, okay. So we have a nice casual conversation. And then... Um... She eventually headed back to her ship. And she was then attacked by the Fallen, who for some reason were in a Jawa sandcrawler. Which is strange, but whatever. I'm not going to question it. Um, she, fend she fended all of them off. Killed all of them. She got hit, though, and I was like, oh, fuck. So I went to help her. She's like, thanks, and she just healed herself. And then the pyramids started vibrating, and we're like, uh... And she's like, oh yeah, um, my boss's plan for all ships to... Once, for all crash ships to detonate. And then, suddenly that pyramid exploded. So heavily, and so quickly, and with such a force that you could just see the explosion from orbit. And then the camera zoomed out, and I saw the Lunar Pyramid explode with the same force, which caused the, you know, crack in the moon to just break open fully. So yeah, that was nice. Uh, things return to some normalcy with this next one. Uh, by some normalcy, I mean I'm no longer getting darkness propaganda, I'm just getting weird normal dream shit. Uh, I was in an amusement park run by Jeff Keeley. Don't ask, I don't know. <laughs> and I went to this ride, and he was... Every time you rode the ride, question mark, you would, um... You would get tokens, which you could spend to get rewards. However, there are some things you could get with real money, and included among these things was this empty blue tetrahedral frame. And I'm like, okay, I'll spend 20 bucks on that. So I spent 20 bucks on that. And... Throughout the course of the dream, it started filling up with like a black sort of rock. And there are just other things that happened. Like, I ran around a, a marketplace for the entire rest of the dream. I got interviewed. I, uh... I helped a couple friends buy some things. I helped some random woman out. She said something really weird, but I'm not gonna go into that. And... At the end of the dream, the blue, like, outline was gone. It was just a solid black pyramid. And I'm like, okay. So I took out a knife and I started carving it. So that it could look like the Lunar Pyramid. By this time, we only had the Lunar Pyramid, so... Yeah. Um... Moving on. I had a dream <laughs> where I started the Beyond Light campaign. And... We went to Europa, you know, the big-ass pyramid was in the background. And... We went to... The I went to this little, like, I don't know what it was, this little black monolithic structure. I scanned it, it opened, and this weird all black liquid made squid came out. The squid teleported around the map annoyingly, and eventually I ended up killing it. I forgot what it was called, but it did have a name. 
uh, I was then told to go somewhere else. So I got on a ship and I went on my way to this red planetoid surrounded by these dark gray statues. The biggest one that was plastered into the planetoid was the veiled statue, like the veiled woman. So I touched down on the planetoid and I saw this massive structure that had, you know, the pyramid textures all over it. Not like the stone, but like, um, like the line, let me just, because I still don't really know what it's called. This. All these, all these lines at the bottom here, it had that texture. So like the blooms in a season of rivals during contact. I went inside though, and it was in a woken structure. Aramis was there. I followed her. She grabbed the splinter of darkness before I could, and she escaped. And then those squid things started appearing again. So I'm like, that's fantastic. So I ran all the way to the top of the tower. And then I met new enemies. They were kind of like iron golems, but all black and more round. Less blocky. Uh, they had yellow glowing eyes. And then I... Uh, I saw goblins, just Vex goblins, except they were also all black and they had a yellow eye. These goblins, I remember their name, uh, they were called Rusted Goblins. Anyway, I killed them all and the dream ended. <laughs> um, another dream I had was about stopping an, un an incoming cabal invasion and they had pulled their resource the red legion had pulled their resources together to create a super weapon which is just a modified cabal cruiser with two massive fusion cannons at the end and we led an assault and unfortunately we failed to stop them from getting close to earth so the fusion cannon was charging and suddenly, the pyramids arrived and shredded the ship, just absolutely devastating it. And the resulting explosion from all that dark energy and from the fusion cannons being, you know, exploded, it caused a dimensional rift, and I found myself in, well, a different dimension. In this dimension, the Hive had purple energy instead of green, their tech was more gunmetal, and the Hive were also the only alien race there. Well, the only major alien race there. Um, there was like a village of people, and I had to convince them that I wasn't from there, from their world, and they didn't, be they didn't believe me at first. But then they went to a dragon, and the dragon was like, yeah, no, this person's from a different dimension. And it was heavily hinted that that dragon was an Ahamkara. The rest of the dream was just about, you know, trying to survive. Um, there was another dream that I had. Um, you remember the sta the pillar room in Interference in the last Interference mission? So, I saw somebody glitch into that way before it was supposed to be seen. And that night, I immediately had a dream about it, which is lovely. It took up a very short pers uh, a short portion of the dream. Um, what happened was I walked into a cathedral and there were four statues massive ones. There was one human, one cabal, one hive, and one fallen. Just kidding. There were no fallen. It was it was a vex. 
I know, right? There's not even Vex in the actual pillar room. But anyway, I opened the I opened the cathedral doors. I went through, and I it was just a church, a big ass church room. And by the altar was a pyramid with a giant glowing light behind it. And yet still the room was pretty much pitch black. There were statues lining the pews. Fallen, human, cabal, scion, everything but Vex. And some of them were glowing red. I went to the end I went to one corner and there was this glowing red scion statue. I went to the other end, and there was a glowing red artifact, like the unknown artifact. Um, which is weird. But I looked towards the altar, and the dream ended. Um, this is going on for quite some time, I know, but this will be... These are the last two dreams. Um, a couple weeks ago on Twitter, I posted this dream. But it had nothing really to do with the pyramids, but it did have a pyramid in it, so I'm at least going to describe that. Um, here I am in Florida, vibing, planning to take a trip, and instead all the flight schedules got upended because a pyramid showed up and hovered over Florida. And that's all it did for the entire dream. The alien invasion that happened later in the dream wasn't even pyramid related, it was just a race of cyborg bugs. And the other thing, the other destiny related thing that happened in between was just doing an exotic quest to find an exotic heavy machine gun that went in your primary slot. But there wasn't really anything worth of note besides that, so moving on. The final dream I had was weird. So I was driving around town. I was just here. My, my dad was driving and we were going along like a normal route that we take that like taken towards downtown. And there is just a pyramid there in the distance hovering. And we're like, okay, that's strange. Because, you know, it's a big ass pyramid floating in the sky. But. Yeah, eventually we got to this little outdoor mall area. Just. Just a shopping area. And. We. We found. Nothing. I don't know where I was going with that sentence. But the dream skipped forward a bit. And when we came back out, my dad wasn't there anymore, but I was with a group of people. A different group of people. <laughs> and... Here... Apparently I was important to something. But... That wasn't... That wasn't like. I mean, that was, that was the point. I was important. So I just don't remember what it was. I'm sorry. I don't remember what any of that was. But, um, a woman attacked us. I. And we had to take cover. So one of us ran to the car. And then I remembered, oh fuck, there's a pyramid in the distance. So I looked at the pyramid, and I got this loud ringing noise in my ears. So I covered my ears in pain, and eventually the pyramid stopped doing whatever it was doing. When uh, you know, the car came back. Uh, we were still being chased by the woman, I, even though we were in a car. And eventually we moved from, you know, modern architecture to this, like, Egyptian, like, temple area. I don't ha no, I don't know how, but we did. We made it there. And once we got close to the end, we sprinted until we got to a row of three chests. 
we opened the chests, and the mission was over. And apparently, just making it there alive was the best case scenario, because the other two scenarios were not as good. Amazingly enough, the pyramid had nothing to do with the other endings. But... If you must know, the other two endings were either fighting a giant worm, or the woman killed everyone but me, and that was it. So that's that's lovely. Um, so that's all the pyramid dreams I've had as of now. Uh, it's weird because the third dream I described is the inspiration for this, and yet I droned on anyway. As one can tell, I'm obsessed with these things. Um, yeah. Uh, if you think any of these things are predictions and not dreams, then interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> I mean, look, if any of this comes true in any form or fashion, then I'm going to be a little weirded out. Obviously, it would have to be recontextualized, but, you know, whatever. Uh, not the case, just an overactive imagination. But it's funny either way. That's all I got. No no theories, no actual gameplay. Just, uh, just existence. Just vibing. Yeah. Uh. See ya.